hit me. From Studio P in Sausalito, the home of the hit, it's time for... Suckatash. Yes, Suckatash, the comedy soundcast soundcast featuring snippets from comedy... Soundcasts. And also interviews with comedians, comedian soundcasters, and other showbiz folk. And now, here's your host, internationally recognized comedy soundcast soundcaster, Mark... Hersha. Mark Hersha. Thank you, Bill Haywatt. And thank you, friendly listener. At least I take it as given that you're friendly. Who knows? Me? Well, as the man says, I'm Mark Hersha, your guide and every other weekly host here on Suckatash, the comedy soundcast, soundcast. Quick catch up for the noobs a soundcast? It's just like a podcast only just not trapped in the past with that old, outmoded iPod technology stuck in the name. In this show, most often plays clips from other comedy soundcasts, like just last week, for example. If you missed it, our lovely alternating host Tyson Saner, in episode 267, blazed through a triple play of clips in a show entitled, ironically, Blazing Through a Triple Play. It was a show that featured soundcast clips from Screams and Moans, the Goods from the Woods, and Off Menu with Ed Gamble and James Acaster. You can still scoop that edition up from anywhere and everywhere soundcasts are found. Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Podcast FM, Podbay, and so on. If all else fails, you can always just siphon it from our show's home site, SuckatashShow.com. This week, I have no clips to share with you. Instead, I'll be doing the thing we often do otherwise here on the show, which is talking to someone, and I'm going to be chatting it up with a person who is a comedian, an actor, a musician, and who is no stranger to podcasting. He even had his own for a while, as a matter of fact. He's been in movies, on TV, and on the stand-up comedy stage for what will be 50 years, somewhere around next year, I believe. A longtime buddy of mine, a longtime friend of the show, his first appearance was on episode six, which dropped 10 years and two months ago. It's none other than Rick Overton joining us today. Rick's got a comedy rap sheet as long as your arm with lots of memorable roles in films like Groundhog Day, Beverly Hills Cop, Blind Fury, Willow, and many, many more. You can catch his latest effort from the comfort of your own home, though. Rick Overton's set list. It's a great hour of one-man improvisation with a compelling setup from the set list format. Basically, Rick at the top of his game, thinking on his feet as premises are thrown at him with no time to prepare. Here's a little snippet from the set list show that I pulled the audio track off of. This is from a bit called Bringing Daddy Issues to a Knife Fight. And now, just speaking personally, I bring daddy issues to a, a knife fight. Some people bring a gun to a knife fight, or some people bring, you know, uh, a duck. Which is, uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's kill him, boy. Oh, look at the little duck. You know, they mate for life. Did you know that? They mate for life. That's geese. Oh, kill the fucking duck then, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'll bring certain weird things. I'll bring daddy issues there. That's why I bring a duck. <laughs> because a duck, they all follow the leader. And I was a, uh, you know, my dad was my hero. So I bring daddy issues to a knife. Why do I go to knife fights, is your question? <laughs> it's because I have Kaiser as well. <laughs> Yeah, I think you should bring an array of different things. You should be like Batman. You should have a special belt of shit you bring to a knife fight. Uh, And of course I forget the knife. (laughs) And uh, I don't want to bring a gun to a knife fight because that's the been there, done that kind of thing, you know? Uh, I remember the first one I went to, I just brought an attitude to the knife fight. So in the course of the show, Ricky keeps getting these weird premises put up on a screen during uh, the action, and he instantly has to start riffing material off of them. You can find a link to the special up at SuckatashShow.com, or head over to ComedyDynamics.com to find a list of places where you can stream the show. We're going to jump right into my chat with Rick right after we hear from our sponsor, Henderson's Pants and their all-new 
peer sucker pants. Hello, friends. It's that time again. But then again, isn't it always that time? That time when you need a favor from a friend or acquaintance who is just a little bit better placed than you on the food chain. Well, nothing says lend me a hand better than a pair of Henderson's peer sucker pants. That's right. I said peer sucker. Because although these high-quality trousers are made of 100% seersucker for a durable, comfortable wear, it's the little extras that your friends in high places are going to notice, setting you apart from the rest of the toadies right away. They'll see the built-in knee pads and scuff-proof finish right away. Upon closer inspection, they're bound to notice the breakaway codpiece and retractable cheek flaps. Finally, the peer sucker recessed hip-mounted ashtray and beverage caddy will put you over the top when it comes to being their A number one choice when it's time to be voted most likely to earn their favor the hard way. Originally designed for the boys in the mail room, the males in the boys room, and the boars in the board room, Henderson's peer sucker pants are available wherever people are working hard to claw their way to the middle. That's Henderson's turning out pants like they're going out of style, which they usually are, since 1904, and now back to Succotash. Joining us is uh, old friend of Succotash, old friend of mine, Rick Overton. Rick, welcome back to Succotash. Hey, Mark, it's good to be back again, man. How you been? Been good, been good. You know, you are, you are our guest on episode six 10 years ago uh, 10 years ago old, back in the old days when i was still bald <laughs> what? what what but uh, and you visit us visited with us uh, a number of times uh over the years and it's great to have you back it's been a while since we've spoken to you here so uh Too long. Good, to have, good to have you back good to be back thanks for the invite Absolutely. And, uh, yeah. You know, I've uh, done so many Zooms, I've turned into a Zoombie. <laughs> well, do be well, a doobie and don't uh, be a Zoombie. Right. The, the, rec <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the reclining dead. <laughs> uh, you know, I, uh, I, I'm thinking of starting a union. Yes. For all the Zoom people, it's going to be called Zag. <laughs> Zoom attendees guild, and then for people who are just interested, there's Zig, Z Zoom interested guild. You know, just a, you're lurking. You're not really. I'll I'll type something, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna show my face. I'm not letting anybody <laughs> see this crap behind me in the house. You know, exactly. Uh, and so we'll have the two zigzag unions, and there won't be uh, any real benefits or anything like that. Oh, for, so just for like a couple of years, I'm to take I'm taking some money in here for me. <laughs> yeah, solve a, solve a few of my problems, and then uh, eventually we'll come up with a uh, swag T-shirt or a mug or some kind of a press so, crap like that. Yeah, so actually a little bit better than the regular unions. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, better medical coverage. <laughs> Well, as you said, you've done a number of uh, Zoom calls since uh, the onset of the pandemic. Um, yeah. What? Let's just kind of talk about because I've talked to a few guests about this sort of the performance aspect of doing your thing in this medium yeah. uh, from a from a stand up perspective. And then I've got a whole improv discussion I want to have with you about that. But let's talk yeah, about sure. sort of stand up, right? When you're kind of addressing the camera and perhaps a partially or completely unseen audience? Well, it's, it's uh, a real test if you can remember where the laugh was supposed to go. <laughs> Interesting. You got that old sense of, you remember when you did that bit and you used to get a laugh there and that's what you just say, you nod, you, you wait for a second, then you keep talking because it, it needs the nod and wait no matter what just to set up the next part. And... Uh, <laughs> You know, it was much more fun with a laugh, but I know that's where the laugh should go. Um, now, have uh, you ever tried it with a, with the audience mics on? Yeah. And what is that like? It's a because of noise cancel and all that. You hear. And it sounds okay. like someone's choking on a shrimp cocktail. <laughs> Because you're working a lunch show somewhere. 
<laughs> and a, se- a senior is going down, you know. <laughs> hey, how'd you do? I killed. Oh, God. Uh, how could I go back? Um, yeah, it was, so, it's, it's very difficult to figure out, you know, because it's like the, the pioneering Wild West where uh, some things were set up ahead of others to not, and they weren't working right because the other things weren't set up yet. Yeah. And certain structures and, uh, you know, running a, a railroad to an area that's nothing to support it for miles. And <laughs> the, if the train breaks in the middle of that train, you're just, you're dead, you know. <laughs> the, the, the Indians swarm in and it's over. <laughs> yeah, well, no, the natives know not to go there. That's right. <laughs> they know there's that's no a, water, there's no food, right. there's nothing. You're dead. You can't walk that distance. You're just dead. It's Death Valley. <laughs> yeah. And so the, the train came in and then, hey, we'll put telegraph through. Then we can send a signal. <laughs> now did you I, I imagine you must have tried writing material for this sort of presentation but as you say if you didn't do the material before all this happened you really have no way to gauge whether the laughter is coming or not uh you gotta go on your old you know tummy you know the old dog yeah, yeah. What do you got for me boy what do you got <laughs> was that gonna be funny boy yes it <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're so good. Oh, um, it's an instinct that it, it will either survive this or it'll die. Yes. And I hope not. Uh, but uh, it, with, that's which will, of course, in a short while lead us to the next thing we're going to talk about. But right now, uh, for the stand up, trying to retune everything, it's not only accommodating for the fact that you've been from whatever distance you were on stage and however the perception was of that to have that live feel yeah you're not on a regular tv anymore none of this is a tv some people set it up for the tv most people are looking at you on the size of a postage stamp yeah so if i kind of do a little bit of this every now and then i'm just trying to figure out how to get this old bald head into a postage stamp (laughs) for my delivery and sometimes i'm maybe a little more gesticular than normal and that's the fill, fill the postage stamp, you know. Well, the, the leaning in thing is funny because it's reminiscent of uh, those comics that used to like punch their, their you know, hit their punchlines by leaning into the microphone. Oh, wow. It's a great, it, for some reason, it's a Jedi trick and it never, you can explain you did it and just go, it just works. It just, it just, <laughs> for, forehead, nose. <laughs> <laughs> big big wrinkly eye and it's just funny it's just because you don't you know it's breaking a comfort boundary yes but doing yeah. it in a comfortable setting where he's not really breaking the boundaries don't worry i'm no closer to you right right and so uh you get the kind of uh, voyeurism of all your own discomforts <laughs> <laughs> right yeah exactly it's- that's what a scary movie is. That's what Universal is. You know, the rubber shark is. Yes. The voyeurism of all your dark shit, you know. I remember when I interviewed Jay Leno years ago and talked about um, doing stand-up comedy on television. He said it's sort of like being outside a comedy club and trying to watch through a window. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, you can, kind of, you can hear other people laughing, uh, but <laughs> maybe... <laughs> so this is even more removed though because it's just sort of a per- this personal experience where like right now you and i are both wearing headphones essentially so yeah, right. even if someone was in the room with us they wouldn't hear anything or just no. us looking at computer screens <laughs> leaning in every now and then <laughs> what well, is grandpa on a rocking chair <laughs> yeah. i better have a joke because here i come <laughs> excuse me um and so there was there a chance when when there was a resurgence before the delta variant swept in uh that you were getting back out in the clubs yeah a little bit there was a little bit of uh poking my my head in here and there but uh i am uh just weathering out the hopefully there's a a response on a larger scale to the comedy special I just shot. Let's talk about that. I get more people to see the uh, Rick Overton's set list special. You can find it on Prime, on YouTube, Hulu, and on comedydynamics.com. And it is uh, a one hour, completely improvised 
comedy special playing a game called set list which you can see many examples of on youtube yeah and uh i just thought why not do a whole special out of that and let's get this game out because i'm in love with this game it is the sliced bread of all time for the i think it's the next step of funny challenges you to get into that other half of your own head yeah well i mean it's... duke it out with your own gut and trust those instincts to save your ass that i think it's one of the gifts you can give yourself on every level to play that game Yep. Well, I've saw you a couple of times in LA live doing it. And it's so exciting to see you in kind of this format just by yourself for an hour playing this, this thing. Um, when was this shot? Two and a half years ago. Okay. Oh, All some right. crazy shit came up in the world. I don't know what the heck happened there, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> is it life funny? <laughs> well, we'll, we'll definitely have the, the links to, uh, to so oh, folks okay. can see it from our blog site. Um, but uh, what for you sort of looking back at it is really kind of um, sort of highlights. I mean, it's a little bit of time and distance from when you did it now. So when, you, when you've when you watched it more recently. Oh, please. Sort of, oh, you cannot ask an improver who did set list. What would you have redone? No, no, no I'm not asking oh, what you redone. Well, no, no. Oh, every little joke, the thing is your fine tuning brain going, oh, you know, I should have put that ahead of that, but I didn't know because it came up in the other order. Ah, crap, you know. Right, but can you can you step back yeah. far enough where you kind of surprised yourself watching and go, oh, I kind of oh, forgot I said that. Yeah, that's the other thing. It's, and they're not, some of them are usable again. Mm. Some of them were, you had to be there. Oh, of course, yeah. It is a had to be there game. That's what's, and that's also part of what's so wonderful. It's the same thing with jazz. There's one night, if you're really a musician and you can tell how they riffed differently between the two evenings and which guy was the stronger, one guy was taking the thing, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, then you say, oh yeah, they were separate things. I would have loved a recording of either one of those. And that's just not the way it works. Right. And so the right. brain of the comedian coming after the show is like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I might be able to use that. And you try it. And, and a lot of times they have a place, they do work. Yeah. But and you and you're going, man, that was stronger on the night when I was playing because there is something about the element of playing mm -hmm. that changes the the viewer's perception of everything you're doing. Yeah. Right. Isn't Absolutely. that part of an improv night where a joke you could do like I'm going to do this set thing that was the improv the other night and that the needle doesn't go as far. No, it's not. And it's not necessarily a remark on the quality of that piece. It's just understanding the overall picture you were setting. Well, and yeah, the overall that, mood and the vibe. Well, it's the purity of it too. I mean, uh, you and I are both familiar with improv players who just reheat stuff they've been doing, and you know, it it may get laughs. People find it funny, but it it's lost that in the moment edge. It's almost like they're you know you can see them kind of loading up the guns several beats in advance. They're going for something. And if you've never seen them before, you don't know what it is. If you have seen them before, you go, oh, here it comes. Here comes the bit. <laughs> because uh, there is some safety in it, but I'll be straight up. I don't think it's as much fun. Not nearly. Do you? Never. No, never why, is. Why are you doing that to yourself when this is the one time they give you permission to take the big chance? It's when everyone's with you while you do it. Don't I think don't cheat yourself out of that. Yeah, I think I think the only time I felt comfortable doing it was with a fairly lame audience that was they weren't there to be engaged in the improv. It was like improv had been hired that night, but they were like the audience was there for something else. And so they were kind of sitting through it. And so it was like, you know what, let's bring out the greatest hits. Sure, sure. There's gonna be nights when you're you're in the bomber. It's on fire. <laughs> Yes. You pull, you pull the, you pull the ejection lever. Nothing happens. <laughs> You're fine. Oh, that, that canopy stuck, man. You're not getting out. All right, I'm sliding this one in on the runway. All right, there we go. get the book out. How do we crank the landing gear down? You know, sure. Well, I'll tell you, it's survival is a different story. Yes. If you got if you got to deal with survival with us, there's a drug guy or whatever guy, then it is absolutely the story. Yeah, yeah. But there is no there is no substitute for that in the moment thrill ride of just going by literally by the seat of your pants. Yeah, um, I, I love I love the feeling of turning around and it's 
I walked myself into so much trouble because I really <laughs> set it up in the other yeah. direction. And you're a motorcyclist. And yeah. you got a little bit of that, oh, I think I'm just going to lean it a little further into this curve just to see <laughs> if I, oh, I, I felt a spark. All right, I'm coming up. My heel hit, you know. <laughs> And then yeah. come out, you made Wheel it. Starts to oh, wobble. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you got over the bumps and everything. And then, oh, you hit a little bit of gravel and you caught it. And, oh, baby. Oh, you walk into pea soup, Andersons. You're the badass. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> That's the same thing with setting this stuff up sometimes. Yeah. I'm just leaning a little harder into the curve just to see what will happen, you know? <laughs> oh, yeah. Because the audience doesn't even know how much you're sort of like what you're doing up there. They're just watching the results. And so when you kind of give yourself more of a challenge or a challenge is thrown at you and you just kind of like, all right, I'm going to, you know, buckle down and see, going to punch my way through it. See what happens. I, I am going to be so exclamatory and certain about what I think we need to do here. Might not even be the right framing for a question at all. And not every one of them came out like it was, I did not save myself perfectly. Yeah. Sometimes I look like George Clooney on Oh Brother, Where Art Thou, where he made it to the train car, but the other guys did it, and he slides off. The <laughs> <laughs> I was in and I'm out again. You know? Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, there's that, the, the th painting, painting yourself in that corner uh, and knowing that, uh, oh, I know there's going to be a door. It may be a Wiley E. Coyote door. I got to paint on this back <laughs> wall, but I'm getting out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Mother, yeah, <laughs> little brother, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I like walking off those cliffs, the fool card, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't fall until I realize I was off the cliff. You know, I was. Uh, have you done other improv in this medium other than? Um, well, I mean, Setless was in front of a crowd, but have you tried to do improv like this? I mean, I we're doing show, before Setlist. I had a show briefly before Setlist. Setlist. I had a show that was called Rick Overton Substitute Global Ambassador. You've seen it. Oh yes. And uh, on YouTube, folks, I, I kind of guess left it tucked away because <laughs> maybe I was going to do more with it. But I'll let you guys in on it. That's called Rick Overton. This one, and that's my show, and it's oh, where. Okay. Harry Murphy, the wonderful Harry Murphy, brilliant improver, plays an ambassador to the aliens who are going to be coming down to meet us, except that he gets the flu. And so no way are we letting him meet the aliens. <laughs> and it turns out because uh, I don't have it, I'm his head writer, they let Rick Overton meet the aliens, much to his resentment. And uh, <laughs> so I go to, uh, I, I go out in the audience and I got the whole you know, hazmat gear and they tell me I'm bioclear and I can meet them. And then I, they ask one word at a time mm. to be explained from scratch. They've never heard of this word. And so one after the next, I explain the word to as though someone had never heard it before. Okay. And so I have to really go into detail on it. And the audience, they're really the aliens and they right. really wrote the questions. Nice. And they hand in cards. So everyone out there is really getting the answer they wanted. And I That's just wing great. it. So that was the other thing. And then Troy Conrad had teleprompter. Right. You know, Troy Conrad is the genius behind set list. Yes, absolutely. And Paul Provenza, the genius producer that helped take it to all the other places it went. And so they made a great power team for this sort of artistic breakthrough thing. Mm. And uh, the teleprompter is, uh, it, it goes into a sort of uh, mad lib thing where you're you do have to read this and you know i believe such and such is where america's headed and then a blank <laughs> and you have to keep talking and making shit up and hope that it somehow catches up with the thing that starts up again <laughs> yeah so that one's fun too very cool. and uh yeah there's a lot of great great players at this game and hopefully this special from Comedy Dynamics will become the model for lots of other specials that can be done like this because you don't need a year to right. work on this material. You can go special, special, special. Yes. If someone's got the, the crush questions for you, you know? Yeah. 
And I mean, if you're churning them out at a good rate, then if you if you get a clinker, you just go, well, we're not going to show that one. Yeah. Let's do let's another skip, one. Let's skip the 16th one. Yeah, exactly. No one knows. No one knows what you didn't do. Was, yeah, it was an okay night. Okay. Meh. Yeah, or you put it on the DVD extras when those come out. Oh, wait, no one has DVDs anymore. DVD? Uh, <laughs> Ew. We have to touch those. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Well, I had. Uh, a, I, 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 that's disgusting. I would never do that. I'm going to pour another wine that someone's bare feet made, <laughs> and drink it from mm. this. Drink it from this handmade glass that was blown by somebody's breath. <laughs> <laughs> um, I was going to say, I uh, I had the experience at the beginning of uh, the pandemic of teaching improv. Um, cause I teach improv at the You're a great the, teacher, man. Thank you, man. At the company I work for. Right. Uh, so I was teaching people from San Francisco and New York, and we would do like a two hour session once a week at the end of the work day, which was going great for the first four months, but people got so burned out on doing video meetings that they just started begging off and going, I just can't do another two hours like this. This is just draining, but it was a real challenge. And I talked to a, a guy that, I, that you know as well, Andy Goldberg. Oh, uh, for off, off the Walls, very off. own, original Andy Goldberg. Yeah, so the he, longest single improv, single cast improv troupe in the history of the world. Yeah. So he, I, I had read that he was starting to teach improv via Zoom at the beginning of the pandemic. So I yeah, called Andy right. up and I say, hey, I'm doing the same thing. Let's trade notes. So uh, he and I like came up with like, how do we alter an improv structure so it works for this medium because you're not in the same space with somebody you're talking on a screen it's very sort of distanced and so we came up with some interesting things like you know the situations were things like mission control talking to astronauts so they were great by necessity they were both on screens or so there's uh. a you know, you, you've got like an inner video intercom to the front door yeah you put your funny background in that's right yeah so that was kind of interesting. Or if we wanted to be in the same space, you put the same background behind people. So they're, that's, they're both... you know, that's one thing we couldn't do. They tried it. Remember when they tried to do that live with projections and stuff? Yes. Yeah. And the problem with it is it's just when it's not on a camera, it's more fun to guess and just see the people. But yes. when it is on a camera, it's more fun to have the background. Yes. Because we're trained to treat 2D differently. That's a good, very good observation. And expect a lot more from it. Yeah. Well, you know, a, a buddy of mine who I, I taught improv with, Sammy Weegent, who I th believe you remember meeting, um, uh, he's the guy who runs um, the, uh, the improvised PowerPoint thing, Speechless, right? So he and I have lunch every few weeks. Speechless is hilarious. Yeah. So he and I have lunch every few weeks, and we pick a restaurant in San Francisco to have lunch in, although we're just having lunch virtually. And so we go, we go to Yelp and Yelp always has pictures of the restaurants that people have taken. And we each pick like a background from that restaurant. So when we're having lunch, we're, we each have a different background, but it's from the same restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just trying to entertain each other. Oh, those little things. These are jokes that would not have made any sense 15 years ago. What? Right. Ba backgrounds? What? <laughs> Zoom? You mean that that recording device? <laughs> right. Yeah. The podcast? That's <laughs> no. There's a separate Zoom. Is it a yep. scooter? Is it a, one of those bird? Goddamn. No. It's, it's something that's going to take up two thirds of your life. Yes. You better yes. get used to this. And then yeah. you'll walk outside and you'll trip on a scooter. So <laughs> you'll never go out again. You'll just live in a Zoom world. <laughs> um, Captain Zoom, stay <laughs> where you are. So the, trying to keep your improv chops up during this time, that's one of the things I found the hardest. Because other than having conversations with people, um, there, oh. isn't, there isn't that electrifying a trying to get in sync with somebody else or a group of somebody else's and then having that jibe with an audience who's just there to watch and also interact all that's gone hang on 
Yep. What page on the script are you on right now? Uh, uh, 24. Page, lost me. 20, oh, sorry, 24, 24, scene, yeah. tw scene 24 or page 24? Page 24, right. about two thirds down the way uh, of the page. Yeah, yeah, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, it says uh, Overton and then parentheses outraged. I, I, I thoroughly uh, disagree. Uh, the improv <laughs> is the only way to go. I got, I got a better one in me. Can we go from the beginning? Yeah, let's start from the top. Let's go back to one. <laughs> okay, back to one. <laughs> so what's it like trying to keep your chops up improv-wise during this, this weird time? You're looking at it. <laughs> it's a lot of funny, just the fun talk with funny people. Yeah. I mean, just try to remember, you know, and sometimes it's just trying to be clever with clever friends on some social media thing, zing, counter zing. Yeah, yeah. Playful, playful topping of. Yeah. You know, it's like what it, old men would have been doing some other version of at a poker game or whatever else, you know? Yeah, and it's funny too, because I mean, I keep forgetting the different mediums that I've like talked to people on and I'll be searching for a conversation. I can't, was that Instagram? Was that Twitter? Was it, I can't <laughs> find more. I mean, you and I used to have exchanges. I couldn't remember. Was it on Facebook? We would throw stuff back and forth. I don't, yeah. even, I don't even remember. Oh, I'm just getting nostalgic about my space. <laughs> oh, I could just, yeah, I just picture the young gentlemen with their straw hats. <laughs> Asking a lady to the soda shop, you know, arm in arm, a gentleman. Uh, I can't believe we cycled through Vine already. I know. Oh, that was Vine. That was so long ago. Yeah, it was. It had its own little. It had the life that was perfect for its format. Yes. Because yes. I almost, you know, I had a I briefly had a, a deal for a TV series. Oh, I didn't know that. It was going to be called The Man with the... <laughs> <laughs> going to be three million episodes for the first season. <laughs> Each six seconds long. Yes. Fantastic. Hello, and... I would like to... <laughs> <laughs> to be continued. Speak, uh, speak to you about something... Stay tuned next week. <laughs> oh, man. It's, uh, I mean, I've now tried to sidestep some of them because it's just like, I'm just worried I get involved in it and it's just going to go away like Vine did. Like, I mean, there's three other video things. I can't, Periscope was one. Yeah, Periscope, right. Periscope. Now there's, now TikTok seems to have some stickiness to it. Um, right. but, I, but I'm leery. I'm very leery. I'm de not Dennis Leary, just very leery. <laughs> I'm, I'm Timothy Leary. So <laughs> I, uh, Deeper. That was look at that. How did we figure this this Hawaiian shirt negative thing we did here? You know. Hey, you're right. This is very much so. If only people could see this. Ah, all right. damn it. Ah, well, we've always been in a kind of a strange sync, you and I. You know. That's right. That's right. Synchronized somehow. Uh, senses of humor have always lined up. Yeah. Uh, we've always had fun doing improv together. Absolutely. We've yes. even gotten to, to, to join Robin Williams. Oh, man, the best. The best. Remember that? Oh, how could you forget? Of course. Yes. One bar. So good. So good. But you got to work with Robin a lot. Uh, more than most people, I think. A lucky more, break. More consistently. And, uh, you know, we just observed his, uh, his birthday and passing over the last month and a half or so. Um, and uh, he is uh, quite a vacuum was left in his uh, his departure. It's the end of an era, end of a kind of thing. Yeah, it, there, it's not the end of comedy. No, by any means, it's just the end of a a, a mindset about it. Mm. And that, the the next. The next artist will step in and do something wonderful. Oh, absolutely! That art, like like Jurassic Park, art also finds a way, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it will. Uh, it'll sprout out between the cracks in the cement, and it'll make something new. And it has to adapt to its environment. I think doing 
in some ways, doing an act that's 10 years old that doesn't deal with what we're going through right now kind of looks 10 years old, you know? Yeah. I mean, I've talked to a, a number of stand-ups, interviewing them, and just in conversation with friends that just, they go, I, I don't know what I'm going to do when I go back to the clubs because everything I do did is trite now. It's like... Yeah. And the first three guys that go up and do mask stuff. All right. Well, okay. There, there was that whole hunk I was working on. <laughs> Hey, but yeah. here, here's my mask take, everybody. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, what is, what constitutes funny in the aftermath? Um, and in, I mean, if you think about it, in certain ways, it was like when 9-11 happened. There was a very sort of slow comeback to, all right, I got to mention it, or do I have to? Yeah. And, and if the I, ones that broke late night, guys who broke the ice by talking about it. Yeah, Gilbert. Were, we're able to get back the soonest. Yeah. Because they broke the ice. The others having to sit on it never completely jump in the other way because it feels like a level of negligence. Yeah. A comic feels negligence, not acknowledging a giant global event. That feels negligent, you know? Yeah. So you have to kind of wait till the tide kind of settles down and you can jump back in the water. Yeah. 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 And also, you dread doing overlap material. That was just like the bit ahead of you. Yes. Yeah. And if there's only one or two jokes about the whole thing, or I'll mine that 15th joke out of this. And, yeah. You know, it's so just that, the problem with it. It is lots of these things are like a big wooden kitchen match. Mm. And the first strike is the last time you're going to generate your own flame from it. You might be, he might hand it to you and you've got the little part that burns your fingers at the end of it. <laughs> Right. But it's it's never going to relight as from scratch for you. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. been it's been burnt. And ideas are like that, you know, premise burners, you know, those guys get ahead of you. And as the week goes on, they slowly take everything you were talking about premise wise, but put their little twist on it. And so you look like an idiot for complaining about it, even though he kind of did like get a little inspiration as the flattery goes, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interesting. And so that same principle exists wh whether or not that's consciously being done or not. And they, they don't have to all know your act. It's not their job to dodge material because of you. It's just your luck you went then. Yes. You know, and they always say, oh, you're the really, you're older senior. You should go last. Oh, fuck. God. I just get me out of here. <laughs> you know? Yeah, exactly. But, uh, <laughs> they, uh, no, no. It, uh, so you have, it, it does. Here's where improv comes in. Everything you'd written on all your index cards is basically burnt by the time you're going to go up. Crumple, crumple. Yeah. <sighs> Breathe and go. Yeah. Yeah. And do you go? That, the, the audience loves when you're dealing with the reality. So if you're bombing, it goes, well, this is going great. That's your first laugh. Finally, your needle's going back to where we are. You met yeah. us again. Nice. Yeah. As opposed to what you wrote yesterday. Yeah, and you can't kind of springboard off what went before you because then they go, oh, the guy's like vamping, <laughs> hoping, hoping something like comes into view and he can kind of tighten the focus on it. Yeah, yeah you know, right. Find some piece of like stuff that got uh, thrown off that uh, he can kind of like, ah, nah, 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 on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, you know, got to eat. <laughs> That's why, you know, some of these, some of the acts that have real kind of non sequitur a non sequitur type humor can tend to do fairly well in that situation because their stuff doesn't connect to anything. It was never writing on the moment. Yeah. If you think about Stephen Wright, uh, oh, yeah. Emo Phillips, uh, folks like that, that their stuff is very sort of esoteric and mm. not, not connected to the, the zeitgeist, right? Yeah, absolutely. Hedberg. Ted, oh, definitely Hedberg. Yeah. Uh, he was not necessarily current events based so much, though he could deal with it on occasion. He would have yes. the, the, the rare bit that was about that, but most of his stuff was absolutely timeless and universal yeah. by the absurdity. So you do choose a path if you are going to go down the, hey, look at this road, you know, because yeah. it has to be at a time when the given assumption is someone is looking at it. Yes. Yeah. Or you're or you're going to be that guy who points it out when no one knows what you're talking about, and, you know, gear, gear up for that. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, did you happen to watch Bo Burnham's special inside? 
Yeah, he's a genius. That was, I thought, he's an so, absolute yeah. multi level, he could do it all genius. Yeah, super. I mean, he's a multiple, multiple layer artist. Oh, definitely. Definitely. Um, and definitely took everything, a sidestep towards everything. So nothing was coming at your face on. It wasn't like, oh, I know where this bit's going. It was like, whoa, this is, oh, it's a song. Oh. <laughs> yeah. And that guy can sing. Yes. He's good at everything. Yep. And he's directed now. So he knows how to like use the camera. He's obviously an amazing writer. Um, crazy. Yeah, Renaissance, Renaissance cat. Yep. Definitely. I'm a fan. Yeah, he's brilliant. He's brilliant. We we need lots of that. Yep. More, more of that. So uh, this is just the sort of advice that you probably never want to have to talk about. But the idea that somebody decides, I'm going to get into comedy now. <laughs> hey, step right up, son. <laughs> so <laughs> you want to see the talking snake? <laughs> do you want to sign a movie deal with the talking stick? so uh but it's I, funny because uh, i mean there's a there's a, a site or there's a, a group on facebook in san francisco there's a san francisco comedy group it's all it's all seems like all new people um and there was a note on there the other day i saw where a guy says you know i've been wanting to do stand-up for a number of years and now i think i'm ready for it i was like have you looked around is this really the right time you you want to jump in where <laughs> well, are you where are you going to do it when i started the business was not in the boom yet yeah. there was still the playboy club there were still strip joints and the pay was not off the charts you know so it was low pay and it was kind of for the fun of doing it uh, colleges would pay for what you were doing back then and for what you paid for rent back then it's sort of if you did enough it all worked out somehow and that seemed like it was almost enough yeah. for a young for young artist and in a strange way the business may be thrust back into that mm. set of circumstances for its own new reasons and so it's it, it, the problem is there's recent video record of having entered the business for completely ruthless <laughs> series based movie deal reasons. And that I'm sure will that mechanism will continue to some degree, okay. but I think it will be, you, you'll get to the point where you can join that mechanism. If you instill an ethic that comes from that earlier time and you're doing it more for the love, you, you can't just use the previous footage as the model for how you're going to do this. Yeah. I, I'm, you look, I timed it where that worked. I'm sorry, but Hey, <laughs> consolation prize. I'm old. Yes. You're young. You win. Yes. <laughs> you win. So how does, how does it feel to be rounding on? I, uh, I, don't know if you mind I say it, but it's been almost 50 years at this point yeah. since you first set foot on stage. That's right. That's you, right. Yeah. How does that, <laughs> how, how, how does that feel? Uh, it doesn't feel like a half century. Mm -hmm. It feels like all separate incremental memories mm. with all the details in between the same way you you will never see the watched pot boil. Mm. You'll never count this off as a half a century. You'll yeah. only br brag about it when your age affords you some seniority in a conversation, you know. <laughs> then out, out all the, the, the you know, out of the way, everybody. My poker hand of age, crap like that wins, you know. <laughs> uh, here, beat that hand, baby. <laughs> Make way for my resume. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Hangway credentials. Hot credentials Cred coming through. Coming through. <laughs> oh man, that's great. That's great. Um, trying to think uh, what else that uh, covered a lot about the comedy and stuff, but there's other things going on. What about the in terms of acting and things like that, you know, we're in an age now where everybody's just doing auditions in their, this was before the pandemic, doing yeah, auditions into their I'm iPhone. I'm sending them in, waiting to hear. 
Yeah. You know, but the thing is now a lot of much bigger names are kind of snooping around the middle acting mm. territories there. That's kind of, that was my, my corner. I kind of had my cardboard out on this corner here, man. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was, yeah. uh, this is sort of, I catch him at the red light here. And so yeah. bigger names are going to draw. It's, uh, look, a lot of it's going to offers. And the, you know, the ritual of an audition, but a lot of it goes to offer and you yeah. just don't, it doesn't look as good when you're, you know, doing <laughs> it into the camera there. Yeah, it's not exactly. the same energy. You got to, I, I, and look, I have camera training. I know what goes on on a camera and I, I do what I can, you know, it's just, there's a lot of guys want that thing too, man. A lot of guys are pools and giant <laughs> helicopters. They got to keep that stuff paid for. Yeah. And whether it's, Stand up, improv, or me giving like a presentation to a client. When you're not in the room and feeling the energy and getting the feedback, there's just it's it's a dead medium at that point. You know, I mean, yeah, I, you, I was recently uh, I, I was recently doing presentations for a client in South Korea, and there were like eight clients on video, all masked up because they were all in offices with each other. So talk about no response. First of all, they're muted. Second of all, I can't, you can't get a smile. No, There's no smile. <laughs> no, no expression. It's like it was. It was like entertaining, or it's like presenting to a room full of surgeons. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the comedy amphitheater. <laughs> We're gonna have to remove your spleen and your funny bone. <laughs> <laughs> A humorectomy. <laughs> uh, at the same at the same time, there's so much wide sort of not widespread, but the medium has spread out to this weird sense of you know there's stuff online, there's stuff on all these different channels, and then the channels are feeding other channels. I was just watching a series from FX, which is now on Amazon Prime, which still has Netflix, Netflix like. IDs on it. It's like, where did this thing even come from? The, the center, you know, is George Carlin's big electron. Mm. Uh, well, there's just, there's, well, then it's buying everything else. Yeah. One thing is buying everything. So it's all going to be one thing. Mm. And then one day you'll just watch, it'll just say TV guide and underneath it'll say show. <laughs> and you go home and you go click and you watch show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and the, the end of it, it goes sleep, and you. Just... <laughs> and then there's a chime and says, "Wake, wake, w work, eat." <laughs> yeah, work. Oh man, um, but that said, there's some engaging stuff being made because yeah. because of this the splintering of the medium. There are people that become much more daring. There's, I mean, you and I both like our humor sort of on the dark side, right? And there's a lot of dark stuff out there, ah, which yeah. is just so kind of this. Ne we never would have seen these shows if everything had stayed three networks. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Yeah, a lot of very edgy, edgy action out there. Yeah, it's edgier in some ways than some movies coming out. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, what, what kind of shows, what shows are grabbing you these days on those new networks? Well, I just, I, we just finished watching one. Uh, we blazed through the three seasons and they're like 10 shows a season of an Australian show called uh, Mr. In Between. Uh, no, neither had I. It, it was in Australia, then FX picked it up and now it's on Amazon Prime. They picked up the three the three seasons. It started out as a movie called The Magician, and it's it stars this one guy. And I wish I could remember his name off the top of my head, but I can't. He's an Australian actor. He wrote the thing. He he's the star of the thing. He plays uh, kind of a low rent hoodlum, uh, sort of a um, uh, what was that Showtime show Ray um, with um, Donovan. Yes, Ray Donovan. So Leo Shri Shriver was yes. Ray Donovan, a uh, Hollywood fixer. Fixer. So he, fixer. so this guy plays kind of a low rent version of that. He works for a guy that runs a casino, 
And he goes and he like tries to get money out of people that owe the guy money and he'll kill people. But he's also like, a, he's a father of a nine-year-old girl, single father. And uh, he's, and it's, he's a great actor and he's never been in anything that I can find on IMDb. He's got no other credits other than the original movie, The Magician, and then doing this series based on that character. Wow. And he's phenomenal. He's wow. just great stuff with his face. You would love it because I know you're all into like, how do I just change my expression slightly to get this kind of mood? And you can just see his face is almost like a baby's face going through these emotions and stuff. Um, and it's, it's dark, it's funny. And I would never have seen it. I was turned on to it from a podcaster who lives in Australia. I have to check hey. it out. Yeah, he said, hey, have you seen out. this? Yeah, so it's- Mr. Okay. Inbetween. How about you? Anything uh, kind of grabbing you lately? Let's see, what have I watched uh, that was gripping? I watched um, The Handmaid, all the seasons of Handmaid's Tale. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, let's see, what other shows? I watched The Expanse. I watched like the first season and then kind of, it's so easy to lose track of shows where all of a sudden you get kind of sidetracked and you go, yeah. oh yeah, I'll come back and watch that. And then you forgot what exit you left it on. Big network note for everybody who's cranking this shit out now. Stop feeding us dystopia. Mm. We get it. Yeah, you're not, I don't want you reminding me of what I see when I go out the door. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I know you're psychologically, predictively programming us to, to embrace it. <laughs> Knock it off. You ruined a lot of things by taking their immoral core away. Mm. And people told you they're starting to hate you now. And they're all going to like you when you bring it back because you're not in charge. The fans are in charge. When are you ever going to learn? When yeah. we, yo, but they're nerds. There's so many of them. And they're just people. And they outnumber you and your nerds too. They're just better at it than you. <laughs> they're the actually smart version of you. So stop feeding us this crap about everyone's a backstabber and taking what was lord of the rings and turning it into game of thrones which is you know lord of the rings if written by golem yes <laughs> yes yeah the sociopath <laughs> version of a of a moral story you know yeah, no yeah. no one is good everyone is bad and, you know yeah or new we com and we call it complex yes or the latest versions of star trek versus the original versions of star trek i'm I am so down with Doug Jones, it's ridiculous. Oh yeah, no, fantastic. And, and he's he's the one, he's one of the ones keeping the lights on in that town, man. And uh, yeah, but they got, oh, did they get the mail on that cynical shit, you know? Yeah. And so now every episode is, here, let's have a long talk in the hallway. <laughs> yes, yes. I believe in you and I think you need a hug. And here's a special Enterprise Star Trek hug for you. <laughs> and you're going to live long and you're going to prosper. <laughs> and this is our positivity speech, which is a form of apology for the first season. Yeah, exactly. And now it's a lot because uh, <laughs> damage control, damage control. <laughs> man, man, man. Yeah, we should have now, followed the... Right. We should we should have followed the prime directive for our own shit. We got in the future. And now the, like all the ads are, we're a team. We believe in each other again. Because <laughs> tomorrow's about working together and believing in something again. I also love and, the idea that they decided. And, and we're allowed to go outside. I like the idea of them having the arrogance to do a prequel to everything that's come before and then realizing, oh, there's no way we can actually carry this out because none of the shit we're doing mattered in any other show that yeah, happened. So okay. let's set, let's send everybody 9,000 years into the future. While, where they we can. Figure, while we figure this shit out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and everything's really bad in the future. Yes. So what's the use? <laughs> Set phaser for 99. <laughs> uh, set fire for, for, for feedback loop. <laughs> Doppler me out of here. Mm. 
Well, Ricky, it's great to catch up with oh, you, pal. Oh, is the time up already? I oh, think the time's man. up for now, but uh, we'll we'll of course have you back and uh, uh, sort of uh, sort of off stage version. I'm coming down to LA in a couple of weeks, so looking forward to hopefully catching up with you when I'm down yeah. there. Let's in do person that. and um if people want to catch your special i'm going to put the links all up on our blog site at uh, succotashshow.com and uh we will get people watching you on set list and uh, i'll include a little bit of a filmography so people can enjoy some uh, rick overton stuff some prime rick overton stuff well, i um, thank you very much man and i uh, really appreciate it. maybe but give them uh, uh the uh some of my set lists from uh from YouTube, because they can watch that part, but get a, get a sample of it or show them the trailer. Will do. That's what I'll do. Thanks, my friend. All right, buddy. Talk Take to care. You soon, Mark. Thanks again, buddy. This Talk is a lot of fun. I didn't want it to end. Talk to you soon. Bye. Talk soon. Bye. Thanks again to Rick Overton for joining me on this episode. Remember to check out Rick Overton's set list, and you can find out where to stream it at comedydynamics.com. I know the episode's a little long this week, but we would be remiss if we got out of here without taking a quick look into the tweet sack. Right, Tweety? Let's see who's bandied our at Succotash show handle around the social mediums this week. Jock Doc Podcast. The Talking Dicks Podcast. Miss Ricky. Matt Knudsen. Fascination Street. Indie Game Bot. Rivers Langley. Hunter Block. White Cat Entertainment. The Judges Podcast, Screams and Moans, I Shake My Head with Lisa and Sam, The Stew Pot, Salty Language Pod, Misfit Scully, Travis Clark, Nelu Lalouv, <laughs> I think that's right, Ziada, Hobo Eddie, Paolo N, The Goods from the Woods, Apocalypse in Review, Christine Blackburn, David Lee, Adele Blah, Let's Chat Podcast, and Yoshi140. This program deals with themes of an adult nature and is intended for a mature audience. Man, I am running way over. No, you're fine. Go as long as you want. Seriously? I don't want to delay the other shows in the lineup coming up behind us. This is a sound cast, you moron. Hope you enjoyed my visit with my buddy Rick. I know you're going to dig my compadre Tyson's clip-filled foray into comedy soundcasting for next week's epi, 269 and in the meantime be sure to mask up vax up and try to remember that science isn't trying to kill you it just can't help itself finally if you know someone who could really catch a clue as to which comedy soundcast they should start listening to try passing them the succotash you've been listening to succotash the comedy soundcast soundcast with your host, Mark Hershaw. Brought to you by Henderson's Pants and... Imagine your company's name right here. Rate us and review us at Apple and Google Podcasts. Find us on the web at SuckatashShow.com. On Spotify. On Stitcher. On iHeartRadio. On YouTube. On SoundCloud. And wherever fine soundcasts are streamed and or downloaded. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Suckatash Show. Like us on Facebook. Email us at marc at succotashshow.com or call into the Succotash Skype line at our toll call number 818-921-7212. You can also upload clips from your favorite comedy soundcasts directly to us using our direct upload link at hightail.com slash you slash Succotash. Succotash is produced and engineered by Joe Paulino through the auspices of Studio P. Sausalito, the home of the hit. Our hosts are Mark Hershon and Tyson Sainer. Our musical director is Scott Carvey. Our booth assistant is Kenny Durges. Succotash is executive produced by Mark Hershon. Until next time, I'm your loyal booth announcer, Bill Haywatt, reminding you to please pass the Succotash goodbye. This has been a Succotash Patch production.